part of having this here today. So we're very, very thankful for everybody that could be with us. There's a lot of things that you could say about this from facts and figures, and a lot of people will probably bring up some of that. But the real reason this is so important, what we're talking about with I-27, and also a couple of years back, another little bill you passed about I-14, those two things really work in tandem. And what they mean for the Permian Basin is those two connections, they're ensuing connections to I-10 and I-20, connect over 85% of our state's population, over 90% of our state's workforce, and over 95% of our state's gross domestic product through an interstate grade connection. So Senator Cruz, all the things that we'll talk about, all of these things, what we really want to do today is say thank you for putting into place the infrastructure that guarantees the health and vitality of the next hundred years of the great state of Texas. It will also connect 19 of our top 25 MSAs in that same run, vitally important. And again, all these other folks up here are going to be saying nice things about you today, too, about I-27. But I'm going to take just a minute, because we're paying for this, to say something particular about Senator Cruz. And it's not about I-27. It's not about I-14. When Senator Cruz first got elected as our United States Senator, we got a call from his office not long after he had gotten sworn in saying that he wanted to come to the Midland and Odessa area for the day. And I said, well, that's great. We would love to help on that. And they said, well, James, you need to understand this isn't really our normal official visit. He wants to come out for the day and spend it out in the oil field, learning about the oil and gas industry in the Permian Basin. There were no pictures. Everybody knows all of them come through here. Normally there's a fundraiser attached to it or a photo op in front of a drilling rig. There was none of that. He was out in FRs and a hard hat, dealing with people who work out in the field all day. He spent lunch visiting with some small independent producers, some of whom are in this room today, to talk about the challenges they face from a regulatory standpoint and a business standpoint. That was his day here. There was no media availability. There was no press conference. There was no photo op. There was no round of applause. He just got on a plane and went back to Houston when it was over with. Folks, that's the kind of United States Senator you want. One who cares enough about the issues that impact you and the people who live here. They kept telling me from your office, the Senator wants to see and meet and be with real people. Folks, with all due respect, do you think Mitch McConnell would have done that? Do you think Chuck Schumer would have done that? I'm standing on the stage with the only United States Senator in the entire United States of America that would have done that. And so while I appreciate your efforts on I-27 and I-14, I appreciate you being Ted Cruz even more. Thank you, sir. As we said, though, we do have some other folks up here today. Lauren Gardunia with Parts to, or Ports to Plains will go next, followed by Howard County Judge Randy Johnson. San Angelo Mayor Brenda Gunther, who we also have had the opportunity to work with on I-14. We're delighted that she's here today. Judge Fawcett from Ector County, Mayor Hoven from Odessa, Mayor Blong from Midland, and then Tom Craddock and State Senator Kevin Sparks. I'm not going to introduce all of them. We'll just go in order as we go through this. And so at this time, we'll turn it over to Lauren Gardino. Thank you, James. <clears throat> And James, thank you for the invitation to allow Ports to Plains to be a part of your event today. Um, you know, two and a half, three weeks ago, we were in the Senator's office uh, visiting with him, had a great visit with him. And of course, when you go into his office, you have an I-14 and an I-27 placard right there, just prominent right there in his office. So, so uh, he, he has, uh, since day one, been championing this effort. And uh, we are just uh, really excited for that and, and just grateful for your, your uh, champion of the effort of trying to make I-27 a future reality in Texas. Um, it's, it's a big corridor. I've been engaged with this, uh, this area, Mid Odessa, since 90, uh, 1999, uh, either directly or indirectly as your, as your district engineer and then now with Ports to Plains. Uh, we're going to build an interstate through Mid Odessa. Uh, you're going to have the unique feature of having three interstates through Mid Odessa. 
Uh, and James mentioned about the MSAs that we touched, those serve those, those metropolitan areas. Uh, but this corridor, the 27, touches uh, uh, about $12 billion in the cattle industry, about 40% of the nation's cotton. Uh, you know, it goes right into the, the ports of Laredo, Eagle Pass, and Del Rio. So we're talking about one of the largest trade markets, Laredo being the largest uh, port today uh, that's, that's on the south end of our corridor down there. So. Uh, it's a big deal, and uh, having Senator Cruz champion that for us is just a, is an amazing and wonderful thing, and we're just grateful for that effort, Senator. Thank you very much. Yeah. <coughs> Senator Cruz, I'm Randy Johnson, Howard County Judge. Uh, Big Spring is our uh, county seat, which is just to the east of here. And I think by all accounts, uh, I-27 is a win-win for our entire area. And that's part of what I want to emphasize is, is uh, um, it, it's, a, it's going to pull together this entire area for a lot of different things. Let me point out one thing that's already going on that I'm excited about. And that is that uh, um, as a part of this uh, discussion, Big Spring is in the process of establishing approximately 550-acre business park at the intersection of I-27 and I-20. And so um, that's going to help in many different ways, but it's really going to set up uh, economic development in our area for the next 50 years, we believe. And so that's going to that's gonna be a big deal for, for our, our area. There's also a significant warehouse and distribution interest already developing as we talk about this. And uh, the city of Big Spring has invested large amounts of money, some $40 million already in infrastructure in that area. So I guess my point in all that is to say, just getting to this point is already making a difference. And we know that that will continue as we go forward. So I want to say thank you for, uh, for your work on this and that we appreciate uh, the Eastern side of this, uh, especially as, as important as uh, to Big Spring and to Howard County. So thank you very much, sir. I'm Brenda Gunter, the mayor of the city of San Angelo, Texas. And the first thing I want to say to all of you out here is how gracious Senator Cruz has been to all of us when we visit Washington, D.C. He always meets with us in his office, not in the hallway, but in his office. He always makes a point to make time to listen to what we have to say. He also joined us at the Ports to Plains Convention in Big Spring two years ago. We all had an opportunity to visit with him at that point in time. He makes time for the issues that are important to West Texas. And when I say that, I also want to say to all of you out in the audience, thank you for supporting this conservative Republican candidate, our Senator Ted Cruz. West Texas, if we don't continue to vote for the Ted Cruz's of the world, we lose the values of West Texas. As important as he is to us, we are to him. And we thank you for continuing to vote for his values and for his representation of all of us out here in West Texas. When we talk about economic development, we use the word fuel, fuel, food, and fiber. So what does that mean? We talked about it a minute ago with John um, uh, Lauren. It's $11 billion worth of agricultural products. 12 of the 20 best meat markets are here in this corridor. We are important in the cattle, the cotton, and the dairy markets. We do produce the food, the fiber, and the fuel that takes care of the citizens of the state of Texas and provides national security for the United States of America. We are important. We might not be big in numbers, but we're big in the numbers where it counts when we look at national security, providing the food, the country, the nation, the world needs, as well as the fiber and the fuel. 39% of the fuel, the oil production, comes from out here. That's a big number. That's an important statement. Laredo, Eagle Pass, and Del Rio in 1994 were about a $25 billion impact. Today, it's $261 billion. And in 2050, $675 billion and those numbers are conservative. This corridor will have the single largest impact on national security, trade impact, economic development of anything that's happened. We are the alternative to all the congestion on I-35. 
And so we ask for your support. We ask for you to continue to vote for Senator Cruz because we know he'll help deliver this corridor. Thank you. Senator Cruz, I'm Hector County Judge Dustin Fawcett. Pleasure seeing you again. It's funny how things come full circle. When working on interstate corridors, we've worked on Interstate 14 and Interstate 27 for James the past five years, me personally. Um, I've made trips with Brenda Gunter, the mayor of San Angelo, to Alexandria, Louisiana, to Natchez, Mississippi. Uh, we've been up in DC. We've made these trips to invest in the future, and that's what this is about, is the future. I talk about it often. What do we want to be when we grow up in the city of Odessa, in, in Ector County, in the Permian Basin? We know we're good at oil and gas. We know we're great at producing GDP for the entire world. We know that we produce everything that is needed for the petroleum age that we are living in. We are living in the petroleum age right now and we will for the foreseeable future. Hydrocarbons are the future and we need ways to get them out there. We are doing great things in terms of oil and gas infrastructure. But with what you've done with Interstate 14 and Interstate 27, now with 27, is invest in that infrastructure, that baseline, that government, that one job of government is in infrastructure. And we are investing in that future so that our commodities and what we do here in the Permian Basin, which matters not just to the state or to the nation, but to international relations, to geopolitics, to the war in Russia and Ukraine, all of those things go right back here to what we do in the Permian Basin. And you see that and you champion that for us in DC. And we are so thankful, we appreciate you, Senator Cruz, for carrying that message of the Permian Basin up there to DC, so thank you. Well, Senator, welcome to West Texas. Uh, I wanna thank everybody for uh, being here. Uh, we're definitely, um, as mayor, and we have our staff here, I wanna be able to welcome all our uh, officials from the city of Odessa. Senator, I had the pleasure to be able to meet with your dad and spend some time with him one-on-one -on -one as we went down to, uh, from event to event. But real quickly, I wanna give out a number. This is the 1,063rd consecutive time that I'm the shortest guy in the picture. <laughs> I saw everybody's taking pictures. So thank you, I appreciate that. It's something I'm very proud of. Um, one of the things is, is that I was 27 years old. No, no, I'm sorry. God, I'm making myself younger, I wish I were. Uh, I was 32 years old when I started working and we first mentioned the I-27 corridor when I was on city council in 1997. So for every 10 government years, that's one human year. So we actually got this done. Senator, you were able to get this done under three and a half, uh, under two, uh, three years. That's amazing. Because like I said, every 10 years is one human year. That's how far back we started the discussion. In those days, it was a a corridor for Odessa, one in between Midland and then one for Big Spring. There was no cooperation those days. Everybody was, you know, fighting for, for their own. This is mine. These things are possible for the reason is because there's a vast uh, cooperation. You can see it across the board. Big Spring, San Angelo, Midland, Odessa. These only happen, these numbers are astounding by the mayor of uh, San Angelo that, that put it out. And the best thing is that we're connecting agriculture the cattle industry and, and, and the energy industry for decades to go. This only happens because decades ago there were visionaries. There were visionaries between now and then and there'll be in the future. So continue to support the conservative, uh, the conservative effort. Senator Cruz has been a champion for Texas, conservative values, home, family values. I wanna be able on behalf of the citizens of City of Odessa to be able to thank you what you've meant for those values in this country, in this state, especially in our city. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for being here and I just wanna welcome you to Midland. Um, it's great to see folks gathered from all around our region to celebrate this. Um, and I also want to welcome you here to Midland, Senator Cruz. Um, we, are, we are celebrating something that is a big move that has really represents decades of effort and there's people in this room who have worked collaboratively to make that happen we have city council members from midland and city council members from odessa and other places this truly has been a collaborative effort over multiple generations of leadership at this point um, and so I, I believe that some of these ports to planes conversations and i-27 conversations began as early as the 80s based on the conversations that i've had with midlanders 
And so what, we, what we're seeing is advancing the ball because of a commitment to that shared vision for our region. Um, and I, we've heard a lot about the statistics of um, our industry and of the other industries that are supported all the way from Laredo to Canada by this future corridor as it's built out. But the other thing that we have to think about is, are the families that live in our area who need to be able to move safely and quickly through our region. I have three kids that are playing sports all over our region and I actually drove back from Lubbock last night at 11 o'clock and I got to see firsthand the corridor that this opportunity and this legislation supports. We have got to see that continue to be built out for the safety and continued development of our region, um, but also for our community. And when we look at the expansion of a road from two lane divided to four, or two lane to four lane or four lane divided, we see incre incremental safety benefits and we see incremental economic benefits. But when we look at something that goes from a four lane or a four lane divided to an interstate standard interstate road where we can transfer people and products and all of the different things, that is exponential economic growth for our region. And that's what we have the opportunity now to welcome, not just I-20, but I-14 and I-27 because of the visionary leadership of Ted Cruz and others who've worked so hard for this. So I wanna say thank you for the collaborative leadership that's brought us to this point. And we have further to go. Uh, just because we have this, this win does not mean that this is going to be built tomorrow. We know that. This has to have continued commitment from all the parties represented here and all the parties represented in this room to see this to the finish line until we're actually driving our kid back from a tennis meet or tennis uh, tournament or a track meet on I-27 to get back to Midland. So thank you so much. I'm happy to be here to celebrate with you and thank you to Ted Cruz. Ted, thank you for coming today. Thank you for everything you've done for the state. You've been great for our office for years. Nadine started Motran, I don't know if you know that, years ago. And it, this has been a goal of Motran and the people in our area to make sure, sure we were all covered and that's happened. And we just wanna say thank you for everything you've done. And for my office, you've been great. I gotta tell you a quick story that I'm sure he'll remember. When we really got to know each other, he worked for the AG's office. You remember this? Yeah. yeah. And uh, he worked for the AG's office, and I was the speaker, and he came over one day, and he said, I need you to sign this. And I said, well, I'm going to read it. And he said, well, you know, it's really nothing much. And so I read it real quick, and I said, I'm not signing that. And he said, well, if you don't sign it, we can't get this settlement that we need that a federal judge from uh, in crazy East Texas had put into effect. And he said, I said, well, I'm not signing that. And he said, well, if we don't sign it at five o'clock, they're gonna arrest the governor. And I said, well, I like Rick, but I don't mind signing it. <laughs> you remember that? Thing? And so this is when we first met. And so he, uh, he said, uh, I said, well, come back. I'll be around till five and then let me know, you know. <laughs> and so anyway, a few minutes, four or five, he comes back and he said, will you sign this? And I said, no, I was half to half of what we were gonna pay originally, I'll sign that. So anyway, that's how we kind of got to know each other. And he did a great job then, he's done a great job for us, and thanks to all of you that vote for him, and I hope you'll do it again in the fall. We're glad to have you here, Ted. Well, th thanks for having me. Uh, I'm Kevin Sparks. I had the opportunity um, and the pleasure to represent District 31, which is all the Panhandle and all of the uh, Permian Basin. And so this is gonna be critical for my whole Senate district. Um, and you know, James, I don't know that I have anything to add. You guys have done a great job explaining how this is gonna be great for Texas. It's gonna be great for West Texas. And really, it's going to be great for the, race, the rest of the nation because they need all of those items that we provide. Um, but James started this by kind of bragging on Senator Cruz's character. And I think it'd be appropriate to end with that. Um, one of the things that has impressed me the most about Senator Cruz is um, his ability to maintain that character in the environment that is Washington, D.C., and I think I know the reason he's able to do that, and it's the reason that I wholeheartedly support him. 
number of years ago, my nephew was living in Houston, and I get a text from him on Sunday morning, and he said, hey, I think I'm sitting by Senator Cruz. He was at church up in the balcony, no fanfare, and he had the opportunity to witness Senator Cruz really worshiping his God. And I think that is why he's able to withstand what's going on in Washington, D.C., and maintain the um, character and the principles that we all know, love, and cherish. So for that, thank you very much. Well, thank you, everyone. It is extraordinary. Let me say, I love West Texas. I love the people of West Texas. I love the spirit of West Texas. I love the patriots in this room. James and Lauren, mayor, 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 judge, judge, <laughs> representative, senator. Holy cow. What an incredible group of leaders you have here. What an incredible group of men and women we have throughout West Texas. Midland, Odessa, San Angelo, Big Spring, up to Lubbock, Amarillo. I got to tell you, if the entire country could embrace West Texas values, the problems we have in this country would be fixed like that. Every day in the Senate, I view my job as fighting for the men and women of West Texas. This is an incredible region, and it's a region that matters for the entire world. West, West Texas provides energy. The Permian provides energy to all of Texas, to all of America, to all of the world. West Texas and the Panhandle feeds and clothes all of Texas, all of America and all of the world. And West Texas embodies a rugged individualist spirit, a frontier mentality that is powerful. You know, you look at these projects. I think back, it was probably five, six years ago, James, that the Ports to Plains committee came and met with me in the Capitol. Met in my basement office, so every senator has what's called a hide hideaway office, typically down in the basement of the Capitol. And they came to the basement and they laid out the Ports to Plains vision. And at the time, they expressed frustration. They said, we've been fighting for this a long time and we seem not to be getting where we need to get. And they said, we're coming to you with an ask. Will, will you take the lead pushing this forward and getting it done? And as I listened to the plan, I said, absolutely, that makes an enormous amount of sense. I'm glad to go to work and do what I can on it. Well, a couple of years ago, we were on the Senate floor, and we were fighting for both I-14 and I-27. I-14 was legislation that I introduced along with Raphael Warnock. Now, Raphael Warnock is a very liberal Democrat from the state of Georgia. He and I disagree on a lot of things. But on the Senate floor that day, I stood up and I spoke in favor of our legislation designating I-14, an interstate that will run from the Permian east all the way east through Georgia into the Atlantic Ocean. And I stood up, I spoke in favor of it. Then Raphael Warnock, he stood up, he spoke in favor of it. And then Tom Carper, a Democrat from Delaware, he stood up on the Senate floor, he said, heck, if Cruz is for it and Warnock's for it, we all got to be for it. <laughs> and the Senate floor cracked up laughing and we passed it 100 to nothing. That's how I-14 got passed. By the way, I will tell you to understand the needs of infrastructure. I remember a number of years ago I was out here on a trip, it was about 10, 10.30 at night, we're driving a Suburban, we had a flat tire, we pulled over by the side of the road, trying to change the tire in our Suburban. Now I'm gonna tell you this, if any of y'all have wandered, if you have strayed in your faith journey, I highly commend changing a tire by the freeway in Midland, Texas. 
because the number of 18 wheelers that came coming by at 70 miles an hour, if you were not close to God when you started, you were very close to God by the end of that night. When that tire got, got changed, my prayer life was much stronger than it was when it started. But look, I think infrastructure dollars need to flow where need is. And need is out here. Need in terms of population, in terms of commerce, in terms of agriculture, in terms of livestock, in terms of oil and gas. The need is here, and that's where the infrastructure should flow. I-14, separately, I-27, what's going to be the Ports to Plains Corridor, I introduced along with Democrat from New Mexico, Ben Ray Lujan. And I-27 will run from Laredo all the way north through West Texas, all the way through the Panhandle, up through Colorado, Oklahoma, New Mexico, ultimately all the way up to Canada. We introduced it, passed that bill into law, and then actually, this past week, we passed a second bill on I-27 into law. And this is a bill specifically to number the new corridor I-27 so that TxDOT can now put up the signs designating it as the future route of what's going to be Interstate 27, which is important for building the support and momentum for the funding to ultimately build this as a full-on interstate. Now, let me tell you some of the benefits of I-27. TxDOT conducted a comprehensive study of the Ports to Plains Corridor, and they found that upgrades would result in a 76% return on investment. $3.4 billion in annual travel cost savings, 17,710 jobs, new jobs, and a $2.2 billion annual increase in state GDP. You want to talk about having an impact on this community, this new infrastructure will have that. Now, I'll tell you, Last week, President Joe Biden was in Texas. He was doing a big fundraiser, getting a whole bunch of people to write checks. And he came to Texas, and the president very kindly expressed his view. He called me a loser. Thank you, Mr. President. He also said, if you love the Biden agenda, you ought to vote for my opponent, Colin Allred. Well, OK, I, I might just have, repeat those comments far and wide. I think that sums up the election pretty well. But it was interesting. He said that on March 21st in Dallas, Texas. And then on March 22nd, the next day, he flew back to D.C. and he signed my legislation renumbering I-27 and put out a press release thanking me by name. So I got to say, I like the president better on Friday than I did on Thursday. And it was actually kind of fun. A lot of y'all know my dad. Friday was my dad's 85th birthday. So apparently the president, for an 85th birthday president, signed the I-27 legislation for my dad. I mean, he was happy about that. And I'll tell you one other piece of legislation that is really going to impact the entire Ports to Plains corridor. And that deals with bridges across the Rio Grande River. Look, for the past two years, I've been the ranking member on the Senate Committee of Commerce, Science, and Transportation. Commerce Committee controls, has jurisdiction over roughly 40% of the U.S. economy. It is very, very good for Texas to have a Texan as the ranking member on the Senate Commerce Committee. A Couple of years ago, city leaders from Laredo came to meet with me, much like the Ports of Plains team came to meet with me. They came to me and they expressed their frustration. It was the beginning of the Biden administration. They expressed their frustration that they were trying to build new bridges across the Rio Grande River. And they were running into bureaucratic roadblocks from the Biden administration. And in particular, in order to build any bridge in America, you have to undergo what's called a federal NEPA environmental review. That's standard for anything you're building. But if you're building a bridge across an international barrier, if you're crossing to another country, you have to separately get a permit from the President of the United States. 
Now, the prior practice had been the president would grant that permit, conditional on the completion of the NEPA review before the, before the bridge got built. When Joe Biden came into office, he reversed that process. And the Biden White House announced they would grant zero new permits for any bridges across any international boundaries unless and until the NEPA environmental review was fully complete. The long and short of it is it ended up delaying four new bridge projects by two, three, four, five years. Every one of those bridge projects it delayed. There were four projects pending, two in Laredo, one in Eagle Pass, one in Brownsville. And the effect of it, not only did the regulatory delay slow it down, it made it harder for the project sponsors to get financing because the banks didn't want to commit until the presidential permit was granted. They wouldn't grant the presidential permit. And so the city leaders of Laredo, most of whom were Democrats, were expressing frustration with the Democrat White House, and they said, Ted, can you help us? I said, sure, I'm happy to. And I thought, in hindsight, naively, that it'd be pretty easy. You pick up the phone, you call the State Department, you'd say, this doesn't make any sense, and they'd fix it. That common sense would prevail. Well, I tried that. I called the State Department. They said, go jump in a lake. Actually, go jump in a river. So then I worked to bring together a bipartisan coalition and unified the South Texas congressional delegation. I wrote a letter to the Secretary of State. I was joined by my colleague, John Cornyn, was joined by Henry Cuellar, a Democrat, Monica De La Cruz, a Republican, Vicente Gonzalez, a Democrat, and Tony Gonzalez, a Republican. All of us together urged the State Department, said this is a terrible policy, it's hurting South Texas, it's hurting all of Texas. Please change it. Once again, the Biden administration said, go pound sand. So last fall, I introduced legislation in the Senate to expedite the permitting process for those bridges. I introduced it on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, got bipartisan support on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. We passed it out of foreign relations. It went to the Senate floor passed the Senate floor with overwhelming bipartisan support. It went to the House. I teamed up with Henry Cuellar. Henry whipped the Democrats. I whipped the Republicans. We passed it on the House with overwhelming bipartisan support. And the President signed my legislation into law on December 22nd of last year, which happened to be my birthday. <laughs> I thought it was a great birthday present. And the effect of this legislation is to dramatically streamline the permitting of all four of these bridges to shorten the timeline. It sets a 120-day shot clock on the permit that the president either has to grant or deny the permit, and if he doesn't act, it's deemed granted automatically by operation of law. Texas does roughly $800 billion of trade and commerce with Mexico every year. This legislation will benefit Texas farmers, Texas ranchers, Texas manufacturers, Texas small businesses, will help produce tens of thousands of new jobs. And let me tell you how it impacts I-27 and ports to planes directly. The World Trade Bridge in Laredo is right now the largest land port in the country. On any given day, You'll go down to Mexico and you'll see a line of 18 wheelers extending into Mexico four, five, six miles, sitting there for hours to cross that bridge. World Trade Bridge is eight lanes. The project the city of Laredo is pushing forward is to expand that bridge from eight lanes to 18 lanes. That is an artery that will bring trade and commerce both, both north from Mexico all the way up through here, through West Texas and the Panhandle and beyond, and also bring trade down south across that bridge. And so that is a victory for jobs and the people of Texas. So I want to I wanna close by just thanking the men and women here. There are incredible leaders in West Texas that know how to produce results, know how to get things done. By the way, you all know this, but Tom Craddock is such a legendary warrior. And he's been fighting for West Texas for so, so long. 
I can remember when I was working for Greg Abbott and he was attorney general and I was a brand new baby lawyer. I was 32, 33 years old. And there was some fight between Craddock and another statewide official who I won't mention. But it was a fight between the two of them and I was sitting in then attorney general Greg Abbott's office and we were saying, well, what should we do? And Abbott said, well, we better do what Craddock wants because he's a knife fighter and he'll kill you if you don't. <laughs> and the other guy will be fine if he loses, but I don't want to tick off Craddock. And that is a real conversation right when I started with Abbott. And I said, okay, and we did what Craddock wanted. <laughs> that embodies West Texas too. I love the men and women in this room. I'm grateful for your leadership. You are extraordinary. I see so many dear friends, people like my dear friend, Ernest Angelo. Thank you for your leadership. Thank you for, I don't, Port Plain may have started when you were mayor. That was, it was a long time ago. <laughs> Wandell, Rhonda, I, I look at so many incredible people who are just wonderful leaders. And I want to say thank you for fighting for your values. Thank you for the fight, fighting for the state of Texas. It makes a huge difference, and I'm proud to stand with you. God bless you. All right. I think at this point, were we going to do any Q&A? We... All right. All right. Well, you've got a whole group of people up here, or if this is a normal deal, they'll just come get all over you. It'd be great either way. But you got, you got lots of choices. <laughs> yes, sir. So I'll say there, there may well be, and I'll defer that question right now to TxDOT. I'll say, look, my, my general philosophy is the investment ought to follow where the need is and where the traffic is. And, and the reason I-14 and I-27 have been so front and center is what's happening out here in, in West Texas and the Panhandle is, is so important and it's so dwarfing the infrastructure that is needed that, 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 that there's, there's a clear need. There are obviously there's value to upgrading infrastructure throughout the state of Texas that in my view, as I said, the money ought to flow where the need and traffic and demand is. Well, look, yeah, I think I-27 is, is particularly important because we see an enormous amount of north-south travel, and in particular, travel across our southern border. Look, I understand Mexico is America's largest trading partner. We do more business with Mexico than any nation on Earth, more than Canada, more than China, and it's growing. And, and one of the things that's very good about it growing you know, one of the consequences of COVID, I think a lot of people realized that our dependence on China was really dangerous, that there was a vulnerability to our economy, to our national security, that it makes no sense that we rely on China for things like life-saving pharmaceutical drugs, for all sorts of things that we need. And we are in the process of seeing both onshoring, a lot of production that had been in China coming back to the United States, but also nearshoring. There's some production that instead of coming to the U.S., is coming to Mexico. And it's much better to be pro produced in Mexico than China. And for Texas in particular, that trade and commerce is really good. And you take, for example, something like cars and trucks. You know, we're seeing Texas is more and more becoming an automotive powerhouse as we're seeing more and more car manufacturing, truck manufacturing in Texas. But if you look at the supply chain for cars and trucks, it's actually quite remarkable where you will you will see the manufacturers construct a component of a car in Texas. They'll ship it down to Mexico. They'll add a diff additional components. They'll ship it back to Texas. They'll add additional components. And, and the given car or car part will go north and south across the border, sometimes two, three, four times, to ultimately construct what is a finished car or truck. And that cross-border trade 
at every stage, Texans, that is generating jobs and economic opportunity. And, and my number one priority in office, this has been true from the day I was elected, is jobs, 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 because that's the priority of Texans. And that's why this infrastructure matters so much, is because it is critical to jobs in West Texas and South Texas and, and all throughout the state. Look, there are going to be multiple steps going forward. TxDOT is right now working on engineering studies, working on providing the funding. There's going to be a back and forth both between the state and the federal government in terms of funding streams. My office and I are going to keep working and pressing on the federal side of things. The state is going to work on the state side of things. But each step forward with the energetic and enthusiastic support of the men and women behind me is how we get there ultimately to the fully completed interstate. That, that will take years. Building an interstate is not a process that happens overnight, but, but every step forward is accelerating towards final completion. Thank you for your time, Senator. I'm going to brag on him a little bit, though, in, in part to your second question, Tyler, because after he passed I-14, that brought a lot of energy to that, and then the, what was happening then with I-27, we went and sat down with TxDOT. And one of the things that will start at the end of this year is the study, uh, and essentially the PSE, all of that to take 158 and 349 here in the Odessa district to a four lane divided status with those interstate cross sections. And so, even though that's a, a text dot thing, the energy that he brought to this by doing that helped us push those two projects over the, the, the hurdle. And those are vitally important to us. All right, very good. Thank you, guys. God bless. We have one more. Oh, we have one more? All right. All good. Well, look, I think events like this help. The, the more attention, the more, one of the reasons, <coughs> one of the reasons Ports to Plains has been so effective is it's been a coalition of city leaders, of county leaders, of business leaders, of community leaders. And, and you know, James was talking about how, how it's been everyone working together. You know, when you run into trouble on infrastructure projects is when you get different parts bickering and fighting with each other. And if they're fighting, say, no, no, we want it here, no, no, we want it here, that can end up paralyzing everything if people don't want to pick between parts of the state that are battling. And I think what has really worked well for both I-14 and for I-27 is we have seen consensus, we've seen unanimity. For I-27, we had the Texas Department of Transportation, and we also had the New Mexico Department of Transportation, one Republican, one Democrat both leaning in, weighing in, in support of the legislation. For I-14, we had the support of every Department of Transportation from Texas running all the way east to Georgia. And, and that ran across Democrats and Republicans. In fact, it was striking. Raphael Warnock, as I said, he's a very liberal Democrat in Georgia. You look at his re-election campaign ads. He ran ads all across Georgia, said, heck, I worked with Ted Cruz. And you know what? Apparently it helped in Georgia. He got reelected. So it's an example where we can work together across party lines. And if we stand united, that helps build momentum for building a project that's going to benefit stakeholders all along the route, both north, south, and east, west. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. I'm never going to argue with Wondell.
She added this as a plant to the platform this weekend. Just FYI, you can see it. So the only response I know to give is, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right, God bless. Yeah.